Hi, this is Ms. Sherbin again, and this is Lesson 38, Plate Tectonics, Questions and Answers found on page 209 and 2012. So we're going to get started um, with the basics. So there's 10 things you need to know about the structure of the Earth that, again, I don't think the reading covered perfectly, but this will be very quick. So the first thing you need to know is that the Earth is made up of um, layers. There's four major ones, but as you can see in this diagram, they can be subdivided into more complex layers. Um, the four major ones are the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. So these are all different types of um, elements. They have different densities. And the thinnest one is the crust, and the mantle is where you'll find lots of magma. All right, the layer closest to the center of the Earth, the inner core and the outer core, are the most dense and the hottest. So the crust is pretty cool compared to the center of the Earth, where it's really hot. And the mantle also has a hot magma, which is still cooler than what we would find in the inner and outer core, but it is very, very hot. Okay, so the crust, um, the top of the man the crust and the top of the man mantle, sorry, are called the lithosphere. The lithosphere is really thin. So over here, this is the lithosphere, and you're gonna see that word come up now and then. Um, but it is where you're gonna find the mantle touching the crust, and it's very important. And it's very important because the Earth is not just this one gigantic smooth piece um, of the crust. It's actually made up of major minor tectonic plates, or lithospheric plates, as you can see here. And um, see these lines right here? These are called um, plate boundaries or fault lines, and it's where two um, tectonic plates meet, and a lot of crazy stuff happens. So, excuse me, the convection currents in the mantle, so you can see here with the magma also around here, the um, hot magma starts to go up, then cools and sinks down. Those convection currents right here actually cause the plates to move, and they can move um, in three major ways, and again, they have subcategories, but divergent, when they spread apart, convergent, when they come together, those can make lots of mountains, and transform. These are the ones that mostly happen when there's an earthquake. All right, so there's crazy earth-shattering things that happen on fault lines, or those plate boundaries. This is where you're going to find a lot of earthquakes, um, volcanoes, trenches, and mountains. And this brings us back to this um, beginning photo. If you see right here, all those yellows are where earthquakes are, and all of that red is volcanoes. So actually in the center here, this is where we see the ring of fire. So if this wasn't cut in half this way, we would see a ring of all this yellow and red, and that's what we deem on the Pacific Plate the ring of fire. And you can see right here, we have a lot of earthquakes, not many volcanoes in California. but this, once again, is where the plates meet. All right, so uh, approximately about two million years ago, is it just two million years ago? 200 million years ago, see if you're paying attention, all of the Earth's continents were together, and there was a supercontinent called Pangaea. So this is about 225 million years ago, and as you can see, they separated about 150 million years ago into two major supercontinents, and then they started to separate into what we know today, and then here we go, here's the Earth today. And this took over 225 million years, and it's, right now, our Earth is even moving, and in 200 25 million years later, our Earth could be very, very different. And extra credit to anybody who gets um, a projection or finds out what scientists think it might look like 200 million years from now. Eight, we know that Pangaea exists because of, one, fossil records. So as you can see here, 
Um, these fossil records, oops, let's get that out of the way for a second, can show that when it was connected, so this is only showing the bottom half, as you can see, North America, which is up here, isn't shown yet. Um, we have these animals that lived on the same continent that then separated. So they weren't swimming across a gigantic sea that we have today. They were living both places and then it started to drift apart. So we have fossil records. And the most helpful actually really are plants because we know the plants didn't swim across. All right, so that's evidence number one. Second type of evidence is matching rocks. So as you can see here, um, this is actually from the state exam. Oops. Um, you can see here the key, we have mountain ranges. So these mountain ranges all that in Greenland and Europe and North America actually line up. Different types of rock layers that match whether certain types or um, just happen to have the same exact pattern. And from the type of, there must have been a glacier around here that scraped all the rock. So we have matching rock layers in geological evidence as well. And then my favorite one for some reason and the easiest one to remember is that they fit together like a puzzle. So as you can see, if you cut them all up you could probably figure out where, um, what was connected to what. Alright, so those are three pieces of evidence that Pangea did exist. And number nine, um, since California is on a major plate boundary, um, remember those, that's where two plates meet. So we have the Pacific Plate and North American Plate, and they happen to be um, a transforming boundary where they slide. Um, there's a lot of earthquakes, as you can see here. So here, tons of earthquakes, and it happens because it's right here on the San Andreas Fault. You can actually start seeing, if we were to take it, zoom it in with all that data, you could see very finely that there's tons of earthquake on this um, fault. So what do people do who live around here, around on the San Andreas Fault? Well, they prepare. So if you're in an earthquake, you can do things like use earthquake um, resistant construction. They have much higher standards for building a house or even just as simple as a bookcase um, in California. You need to create an emergency evacuation plan. Where do you go when that happens? If your house gets destroyed, where are you going to meet up with your family? And you can do that by also looking up nearby shelters. So places that have really solid construction are going to be your shelter. Keep emergency supplies on hand. Um, depending on the severity of the earthquake, it might not be easy to get to a store or um, to the hospital if you have a medical emergency. And then develop earthquake education programs. So here's mine. If we're ever in class together and there's an earthquake, you need to get underneath the desk, cover, and hold on to that desk so it doesn't go sliding away. And we're lucky that we have a really solid lab table, so you will be safe. All right, that's going to bring us to our questions and answers. So now please open up your book to question number one. It asks to describe the theory of plate tectonics. The theory states that Earth's lithosphere is broken into moving plates. These plates are called tectonic plates. What causes Earth's continental plates to move? The convection cells in the mantle push the plates around and cause the tectonic plates to move around. Describe two pieces of evidence that support the theory of plate tectonics. The theory of plate tectonics is supported by the fact that the African and South American continents fit together like a puzzle and that similar fossils have also been found on each continent. You could also talk about the matching rock layers. What types of events commonly occur at plate boundaries? At plate boundaries, there are usually volcanoes, earthquakes, and mountain ranges. Number five. What happens where plates are moving apart and moving towards one another? When they move apart, earthquakes and volcanoes can um, happen. And when they're moving towards one another, you can also have mountains, um, but earthquakes can also occur. All right, so millions of years ago, mountains formed near the boundary between two plates. How were the plates moving at this time? Explain. So if we're having mountains, they're not going to be moving apart from each other. At the time, the plates were moving towards one another. At the boundary, 
between plates moving toward one another mountains can form. Okay, moving on. So direction 7 through 10, for each question, write your answer in the spaces provided. Base your answers on questions 7 through 10 on the paragraph and the diagram below. Before the theory of plate tectonics became widely accepted, a young scientist named Alfred Wagner proposed the theory of continental drift. His theory suggested that continents were once together and had broken apart and moved to their present positions. He proposed that all the continents were once a large landmass called Pangaea, which means all lands. Wagner could not explain what force could be powerful enough powerful enough to move the continents. Wagner's theory of continental drift, and here's a picture of it. He said there was a Pangea millions ago, and then here's present day. So number seven, how have the positions of the continents changed over the past 225 million years? So even if you didn't know how to answer this question or know anything about this, all you had to do was look at the picture and see that they're all together and now they're all apart. So I wrote the continents, which were all and one, which were all one and mass, which were all one land mass. Sorry, this is why it's important to proofread because that would be wrong. <laughs> this is why I say check your work. The continents, which were all one land mass, 225 million years ago, have drifted apart to their current positions. You could have basically said. 225 million years ago, they were all together. Now, they have spread apart. Number eight, fossils of the plant Glossopteris. I don't know if I said that right. Were found in India and Australia. Why is it unlikely that these organisms crossed the ocean? How does this evidence support the theory of continental drift? It is unlikely that these plants cross the ocean, so it supports the theory that India and Australia were once connected. So here's India and Australia, right? They're close together. Supports it very well. Number nine. Fossils of tropical plants and animals have been found in Antarctica. So tropical. In Antarctica? Fossils and tropical plants have been found in Antarctica, a very cold continent. Propose a reason why these fossils were found there. So, if you look at like here, obviously Antarctica isn't as close to the equator as it used to be. So, I'm assuming that Antarctica was once closer to the equator than it is today. Number 10. Fossils of the freshwater reptile Mesosaurus have been found in South America and Africa. Why does this help support the idea that these continents were once joined together? It is unlikely that the freshwater reptile Mesosaurus swam across the ocean from one continent to the other. So as you can see here, this is Mesosaurus. Here's where they found the fossils. That is a really long swim. And that would be the only other way that he could have gotten there. Now for our multiple choice section. Scientists examine rock layers that suggest movements in Earth's crust. These rock layers were probably eroded, meaning um, carried away, folded, which means that they were one on top of the other, weathered, which means that they were um, reduced down to smaller pieces, or sedimentary. So scientists examined rock layers that suggest movements in Earth's crust. The rock layer was probably, so eroded, um, when it moves away because of water or wind. Weathered is when the rock changes shape and gets broken down to smaller pieces. And sedimentary is a type of rock, so folded, because the plate boundaries can fold on top of each other. Number 12, which of the following provides evidence that the continents were once connected? So evidence that they were connected. Fossils, definitely. Water, no. The atmosphere, that moves around all the time cave paintings. Yeah, we weren't around when the earth was um, like Pangaea, so fossils. And the key word today is Pangaea. 
Number 13. Evidence suggests that the east part of South America was once connected to. So South America, east part of South America. Okay. North America. Eastern Australia. Western Africa. Northern Europe. So this is pretty hard without a picture for me. So I'm going to draw here is South Africa. I mean South America. And then here... Right, it goes a little bit like this, right? And then here is Africa. I mean, those fit together. So definitely not North America, not Australia, oh, there's, but East and West anyways. East and West definitely match up. East and East? South and East? Nope. So even if I was couldn't think of it, I know East and West can match. Number 14, which is not common at the boundaries between tectonic plates? Not common at tectonic plates. Earthquakes, mountains, volcanoes, canyons. Canyons are sometimes most usually caused by things like glaciers, not by tectonic plates. Volcanoes, earthquakes, and mountains are. So these are wrong. And good thing I underlined that not because I already crossed out, but it is canyons. Okay, pieces of Earth's lithosphere are pushed around by winds and atmosphere. No way, not strong enough. Waves in the ocean, definitely not strong enough. Movements in the mantle, gotcha. That's the layer underneath the lithos, well, underneath the crust. An organism of soil, you think worms could make an earthquake happen? Mm mm. 16. Where are earthquakes and volcanoes most common? Where? So we know they happen on plate boundaries. In the mantle? No way. That's below the crust. At plate boundaries? Yes. In the middle of the continents? No. Most of them don't have those plate boundaries. Where fossils are found? Not necessarily. Fossils are found almost everywhere. So number two, at plate boundaries. Number 17, which landform is result of movement of plate tectonics? Oh, whoa, sorry. Which landforms is result of the movements of tectonic plates? Which landforms? Okay, result. Canyon? No. Dune? No, that's usually caused by, like, wind. If you think about, like, a sand dune. Sickle Hill? A plain. That's where it's a really low-lying field. A mountain, yes. When the plates converge and combine, mountains do happen. All right, I did say the secret word, and look for links for more helpful videos, and ask me any questions if you still need help with this topic.